In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in the thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have not done. We have not loved you with our whole heart, we have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with a responsive reading of the introit as printed in your bulletin. When he calls to me, I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. With long life, I will satisfy him. Because you have made the Lord your dwelling place. No evil shall be allowed to befall you. For he will command his angels concerning you. On their hands they will bear you up. You will tread on the lion and the adder. When he calls to me, I will answer him and I will be with him in trouble. With long life, I will satisfy him. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. During Lent, we omit the hymn of praise. We continue with the salutation at the top of page 156. And the Lord be with you. Let us pray. O Lord God, you led your ancient people through the wilderness and brought them to the promised land. Guide the people of your church that following our Savior, we may walk through the wilderness of this world toward the glory of the world to come. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Old Testament reading comes from Genesis in the 22nd chapter. 
Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, and he said, here I am. Then he said, take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah and offer him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning and saddled his donkey and took two of his young men with him and Isaac his son. And he split the wood for the burnt offering and arose and went to the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day Abraham lifted his eyes and saw the place afar off. And Abraham said to his young men, Stay here with the donkey. The lad and I will go yonder and worship, and we will come back to you. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. Then he said, Look, the fire and the wood, but where's the lamb for a burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide for himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. Then they came to the place of which God told him, and Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order. And he bound Isaac, his son, and laid him on the altar upon the wood. And Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, Here I am. And he said, Do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram caught in a thicket by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it up for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place the Lord will provide. As it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. Then the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son, blessing I will bless you, and multiplying I will multiply your descendants as the stars of the heaven and of the sand which is on the seashore. And your descendants shall possess the gate of their enemies. In your seed all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. This is the word of the Lord. Be to God. Our epistle reading comes from James in the first chapter. Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he has been approved, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Let no one say when he is tempted, I am tempted by God, for God cannot be tempted by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Then, when desire has conceived, it gives birth to sin, and sin, when it is full grown, brings forth death. Do not be deceived, my beloved brethren. Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation or shadow of turning. Of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth, that we might be a kind of first fruits of his creatures. This is the word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the first chapter. It came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And immediately coming up from the water, he saw the heavens parting and the Spirit descending upon him like a dove. Then a voice came from heaven. 
You are my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Immediately the Spirit drove him into the wilderness, and he was there in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan, and was with the wild beasts, and the angels ministered to him. Now after John was put in prison, Jesus came to Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel. This is the gospel of our Lord. Grace and peace be to you in Christ Jesus. Amen. Our text is from the Old Testament reading today, verse 12. And he said, Do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him, for now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. There ends the reading. Dear fellow redeemed, the first Sunday in Lent begins with the story of sacrifice. 
God told Abraham to sacrifice his son. Now very often this story is used as a story about faith. Abraham had faith in God and followed God's direction even when what God was telling him sounded unreasonable. God had strict laws against human sacrifice. Mankind was created in the image of God. God strictly forbade mankind from killing his image in his worship. And yet here, God asks the unthinkable. Abraham, offer up your son as a human sacrifice. Abraham had faith. He didn't argue with God. He dutifully did as God commanded, trusting that somehow or another, God was going to make this work out. That's faith. God's will isn't always what we want or what we think it should be. Sometimes God's word puts us at odds with what we want and maybe even with what we love. But faith trusts God. It follows his word, believing that he will make things work out as they should, even if we don't see immediately how. Sometimes he blesses us and allows us to see how things work out for good. Other times, we just have to trust that they will. So Abraham gives us a great example of trusting God even when things didn't look like they were going to work out. The story about Abraham is also a story about temptation in a way. Abraham was tempted. He was a human being, the same as all of us. He loved his son as any of us love our children. Probably even more, because this son of Abraham was an only son for whom he had waited his entire life. By the time of these events recorded in the reading today, Abraham is well over 100 years old. And he wasn't going to have any other sons. Sarah and he had tried to have children their entire marriage and couldn't. And it wasn't until Sarah was 90 years old that she was allowed by God to conceive and bear Isaac. So there wasn't going to be any more sons. So Abraham loved this son with all his heart. He, Isaac, what meant the world to both Sarah and Abraham. So when God tells him to sacrifice this son of his, you can bet Abraham in his human flesh was tempted to refuse. Tempted not by the devil, but tempted by his deep love of his son. This is one of those crossroads in life that God puts in front of his people where you have the choice of either go God's direction and probably suffer immensely for it, or go in your own way and keep things the way you like them. Well, Abraham, he refused to go his own way. He didn't yield to the temptations that were put there before him. And he pressed forward with God's will. In our other reading today from the epistle to James, or of James, God's word says, Blessed is the man who endures temptation. Well, that was Abraham. He endured this temptation to refuse God, and he went forward, again, trusting God. You know, we all face temptations every single day. Tempted by the devil, tempted by the world around us, and even as with Abraham, tempted by our own loves. Sometimes we come to those crossroads where we can either stand by God's word and follow what he teaches and know full well it's going to be hard and we're going to suffer loss for it, or do what we want and keep the things as as we want them to be. We're tempted by our loves. That's immense pressure. You know, if we're honest with ourselves, we will admit that we have not done so well in the face of such temptations. We have, in fact, given in to what we want more than once. We've let our loves for other people turn us against God's word. We have come to accept things that we know are not true to God's word just so we can keep those we love and not harm relationships. 
We don't like suffering. We sure don't like being alone. Abraham, he does stand as our example to resisting those desires. Abraham denied himself and denied his love of his dear son. And he pressed forward, trusting God's word. Abraham, he went forward knowing full well he was just a mortal man. He didn't have it all figured out. He couldn't see everything. But he trusted that God could see everything and that what God desired of him was best. So Abraham is, in fact, a marvelous example of self-denial. But really, all these lessons so far we see in this story aren't really the heart of the story. This isn't a story about just Abraham and Isaac. And it's not just a story about faith, and it's not just a story about temptation. This is a story about the love of the Heavenly Father exemplified in the sacrifice of His Son. See, God created this situation with Abraham and Isaac. And he did it for a reason, to teach the world about his sacrifice, to give us, in fact, a real-life perspective of what it meant for God to offer up his son. Abraham may have loved Isaac, but the love of the heavenly father for his son was infinitely greater. God the Father and God the Son are a perfect unity. The same heart, the same mind, joined from eternity. One God, yet distinct persons. There's no human parallel for that relationship. It is perfect divine fatherly love coupled with the perfect love of an eternal son. And yet loving his son as greatly as he did, God still made him a sacrifice. A bloody sacrifice. Abraham, he put the wood for the burnt offering on the back of Isaac and allowed Isaac to carry it up the mountain. God the Father put the wood of the cross on his son's back and left him carry that up the hill of Golgotha. Abraham held the knife that would be used to kill his son and plunge it into his son's chest. God, likewise, held the weapon that would kill his son. The Heavenly Father didn't wield a knife, but he did wield Pontius Pilate and the Jewish leaders and the soldiers who pounded the nails in Jesus' hands and feet. He had the power to intervene and stop the torment of his son, but he stood by and let it happen. Can you imagine the unspeakable sorrow that would have fallen on Abraham if his hand had followed through and that knife pierced the heart of his son? Yet infinitely greater was the pain felt by the heavenly father when his son was pierced by thorns and nails. What Abraham and Isaac went through was intended to teach the world about this divine sacrifice. Jesus was the perfect Isaac, knowing full well where his life was leading, but still embracing it and walking that path to the cross. God the Father was the perfect Abraham, offering up his son into death without hesitation and with no excuses. Because that sacrifice is what it took to save us from hell. The cross was not just the moment of the son's suffering, it was also of the father's who bore the anguish of watching his beloved son breathe his last and suffer such torment. God the Father endured all that willingly, proving the greatness of his love for us, such weak and sinful creatures. And through that sacrifice the Father made, we were made right with God. See, our sins died in the flesh of Jesus when he was crucified on that cross. 
The damnation we earned for ourselves was turned into the salvation earned by the Son of God. It was all for us because the Father loves his wayward sheep. In fact, God was loving enough in this story from Genesis not to let Abraham follow through and actually plunge the son into Isaac's chest. They had mirrored enough of the story of Jesus and God the Father. They didn't have to go the rest of the way. Actually, in the Genesis reading, it says that the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and stopped him. That angel of the Lord, that's no ordinary angel. That was the pre-incarnate Christ. That was Jesus before he had taken on the flesh of Mary. He called out of heaven and he stopped Abraham from hurting Isaac. Because it wasn't Isaac's blood that would cleanse the world, it was his own. As Abraham told his son when they were going up the mountain, God will provide for himself the lamb for burnt offering. Well, God did. Jesus did. In the story, there was a ram nearby caught in a thicket. And they used that ram as a substitute for Isaac. Even here, there's symbol because Christ was that lamb. He was the one who whose death was substituted not just for Isaac's, but for all of ours. His blood for our blood, his pain for our eternal torment. And only he would need to be harmed in order to make the sacrifice needed to atone for our sin. In fact, Jesus was the one great final sacrifice to end all sacrifices. The entire sacrificial system ended with the death of Jesus. Because he now finally perfected it and made us right once and for all. So what Abraham and Isaac merely symbolized, God the Father and Jesus brought forth into reality. And through that, saved us. Thanks be to Jesus. Amen. Now may the peace that surpasses all understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We confess together our saving faith with the Nicene Creed on page 158. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. pray. Heavenly Father, you made the sacrifice no man could make, and through offering your Son, you brought us forgiveness and eternal life. We thank you for your willingness to bear with us in our weakness and sin, and to provide for us what we could never earn on our own. Build us up this day in right faith, and in love for you above all else. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lover of mankind, you see the great evils of our world, 
the disregard for your image in our fellow man, the selfishness and hatred, the immorality, cruelty, and murder. Have mercy on those who are trapped or victimized by these evils. Especially show your mercy to those who are mourning their dead children in Florida. Let your word of life and saving love be heard in the midst of their darkness. And draw the lost and erring into your fold for the light of your love and the hope of your grace. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Ruler of the nations, you bid us honor those whom you have set in authority over us. Look in kindness on our president, our public servants, and all who serve in our armed forces. Enable them to pursue policies that will bless this nation and make us a blessing to the nations of the earth. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Fountain of mercy, into your gracious and loving arms we commend all who are sick or suffering this day. Send your help especially to Jane Duberke as she continues her recovery and to Velda Stotzer who underwent, underwent hip surgery this week. We thank you for having given them the help their bodies needed and we pray you might bless them in their recovery. Strengthen their flesh according to your goodwill and increase their faith as they trust in your word of love. Lord, in your mercy. All of these things and whatever else your wisdom knows we need, grant to us in your bountiful love for the sake of him who triumphed over the foe and rose in victory and who now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give you praise It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who overcame the assaults of the devil and gave his life as a ransom for many, that with cleansed hearts we might be prepared joyfully to celebrate the Paschal Feast in sincerity and truth. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, from the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers. Deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor, and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same manner also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come and the holy supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming we may together with all your saints celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you his peace.